Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I'm Monica, the Kismet Chemist. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Welcome to the family. I am honored to have you. If you are returning, welcome back. I have missed you. Today's reading, my loves, is in celebration and in honor of the Sabbat of Samhain. Samhain represents the year's end, the year's beginning. It is also the time in which the veil between the living and the spiritual realm thins and our ancestors, our loved ones in spirit, our guides, our angels, our ascended masters are able to once more walk in this realm. And they're also able to commune with us, to bring us messages, to bring us wisdom, to bring us more grace, more patience, more kindness and love, and bring us more clarity upon our path. Samhain is the mark of the time when the moon begins to hold dominion over the skies, when Persephone descends into the underworld to take up the throne beside her beloved Pluto and to reign in the realms of the dead, in the realms of the dark. It is a time for us to gain wisdom, to gain insight, and to open ourselves up to greater connection. Along our journey in life, we go through these different shifts, these different changes, and there can be this pervasive feeling, this feeling of there being something missing, some lost peace, lost art, lost awareness, and yet we might not know what it is. This is something I've experienced myself on this journey, and I find it such a beautiful synchronicity that as I was finishing up Friday's reading of last week, no, as I was setting up for the eclipse reading last week, I had this overwhelming message from one of our fellow community members, Sarah Jane, and I had the message from her guides that there's something that she's seeking wisdom on. And they asked me to inquire with her if she wanted to set the intention for this reading, set the topic, the theme of it. Now, when we're working with energy from beyond the veil, there are a multitude of different ways for us to penetrate that barrier, to pass from one realm to the other. In this case, we are putting one foot in the earthly realm and one foot on the spiritual plane. When Sarah talked to me, it came out perfectly, this, this awareness, this understanding of just about is kind of how I can describe it. This feeling of just about. You know you're meant to see something, but it's just about into your peripheral vision, but you can feel it, you can sense it. You can't quite see it. You can't quite grasp it. There's something that you know is right there, but every time you reach for it. Every time you step towards it, it moves just a little bit further away, just a little bit further into the shadows, just a little bit further behind the veil. And it can be frustrating and it can make us want to give up. But then there's that little inkling of curiosity, that, that awareness, that knowing deep within your heart, deep within your soul, that there is that one thing that we are meant to know, that we're meant to see, we're meant to understand. And if we could just grasp it, if we could just gather it, if we could just see it, if we could just hear it, then we'd have the clarity we need. That is what wisdom we are accessing and receiving from beyond the veil, that almost just about energy, that almost just about awareness. 
We're looking at the piece of the puzzle that we know isn't quite missing, but it isn't quite in place yet. Each of these piles has a channeled message that I did by hand. Um, I did some automatic writing for this reading as well as the eclipse reading. Um, getting more into the flow of that, I've noticed that as Samhain approaches and that time frame comes through, sitting with the energies, sitting with the messages, bringing them forth, writing them down, it really does flow a lot smoother now. And I am embracing the shift and the change for the sake of the collective, for the sake of myself, and for the sake of this channel. It feels right to shift this. We have four piles. Each one is representative of a, pers a part of yourself and a person, entity, energy on the other side of the veil. This is what brings you to this reading, this is what draws you to the veil. This is the energy that you recognize. It is that reflecting, reflecting energy between you and another. And the other is not quite here. So pile one, we have the weaver. Pile two, the reflection. Pile three, the illusionist. And pile four, the prisoner. Without further ado, I'm going to put on some meditation music. The timestamps are in the description box below, and I will see you all, my loves, at your piles. Hello, pile one. If you chose the Weaver card, this is your message about wisdom from beyond the veil. Okay, so before we get into the cards, and especially this reincarnation card, I want to go over the channeled message that I got. So the first thing that came through with the Weaver card was Charlotte's Web. And, you know, as I was coming in here, and getting ready for this pile, getting for, ready for this energy, I uh, was thinking about the fact that Charlotte's Web was the first thing that came through when I channeled these messages. And I channeled them like four days ago. Um, I really needed to sit with this energy. But I thought, well, isn't that kind of obvious? I mean, we have the weaver, we have a spider. So wouldn't Charlotte's Web be a natural thing to come through? And you would think it would be, except that I don't... <laughs> No offense, guys, but I don't normally think about Charlotte's Web on a regular basis. It's just not an energy that I usually connect with. It's not even a children's story that I read often enough. You know, when I think about spiders, I think more about, for instance, Acromantula from Harry Potter. Or I think about that giant spider that almost killed Frodo in The Lord of the Rings. Or I think of arachnophobia a lot um in the shower scene where and the like being bit when you like put your slippers on on your okay so okay <laughs> sorry guys I digress but my point here is that this is more about the things that you don't normally think of the things that you would be like why why did that come to mind and you would normally dismiss it as like a passing whatever these are that's more of the energy right now with this message. It's more of noticing the subtleties, noticing the unusual. 
And that seems so strange because aren't we going to notice the unusual, but not when we're seeking signs. When we seek signs, we seek things that correlate to things that we would think of on a regular basis. So we aren't equipped or we aren't accustomed to looking at the unusual. So if we're seeing something like, say you normally see robins, like the bird, a robin, a red-breasted robin, you see those all the time. But all of us, all of a sudden, you start seeing them in unusual places. Like you see them in a rose bush and you start thinking, well, I see robins all the time. So maybe it's the roses that are the message, but in actuality, it's the robin that is the message because you see it all the time, but it doesn't become unusual. And then it's now, it's, I'm having a hard time explaining it in a different term. It's like with the weaver card, there's a spider on it. So a lot of people think about Charlotte's Web. I mean, Web is in the name of the book, but it's not something that I am strongly connected to. So when you might think it's something that everybody else would think about, if it's not something that's strongly connected to you, you're not going to think about it. It's not going to be something that you notice right away. That's the kind of energy that I'm getting here. After that, I got the stories we tell, like the tales we weave. What is it now that you know must leave? And again, I'm getting this energy of allowing for a change in perspective. So the channeled message I got is the mark of a true web weaver is the willingness to bring everything together. Connecting each gentle spider silk thread to another until it is complete. When the time comes and part of the web is severed, this is your chance. You've mastered the art of weaving already, but part of your storyline has reached its inevitable ending. As this happened or happens for some, there is an emptiness where once there existed woven connection. This emptiness, as real as your hands and feet, has been pushing into your mind on repeat. You are missing something, but nothing of what was. What you are missing is what is to come, who you are to become. Fill the emptiness with a new silk thread, a new story, a new desire, a new life, a new you. Be diligent and intentional. For your weaving now is your magic coming to life. Soon you will return to a feeling of wholeness. And the awareness that the messages of wholeness were never wrong, they were encouragement for you to create within the unknown that which makes you whole. So the first thing that I got on that message, or the first thing that really strikes me is having continually gotten messages of wholeness and then been like, this is bullshit. This isn't my reading. This isn't for me because I don't feel whole. I can tell that there is something missing. I can feel it. And your guides are saying, yeah, you can. But again, this comes back to the same Charlotte's Web message. When you're looking for something that you're expecting to find, you won't find the unexpected. So if you're looking for a message about where you're at right now, then you're not going to find the promise of what is to come. And in that, that is one of the big things. So we have, with the card, we have reincarnation. And hang on, I'm going back to my intention for the cards just so that I make sure I explain this. So this is about what is obscuring your vision like that. It's I'm seeing a blindfold. I'm actually seeing like a veil being dropped upon you. It's like the veil that you put upon yourself, whatever you've been missing. So we have reincarnation. Now, not everybody believes in reincarnation, but if you think about reincarnation in terms of a change of self, a change of who you are, the choice to become different, to become new, this is about you recognizing that we go through birth, death, life, rebirth. We go through these cycles. Sometimes they end up coming out of order. So we go through life and then we go through birth. 
And then we go through a rebirth and then we go through a death process and we don't, it doesn't make sense because shouldn't I be in this step? Shouldn't I be in that step? But we're always, we're always thinking that it has to go in a certain order. With you, pile one, this isn't about a certain order. I just got this wave of this message doesn't make sense, but it's not meant to make sense. Whether for me or for you, it's not meant to make sense. It's meant to inspire. It's meant to awaken. It's meant to help you understand that sometimes the things that make the least amount of sense are the things that we're meant to know, the things that we're meant to see. If you keep putting things into a controlled, orderly fashion, you're going to miss the excitement, the experience. You're going to miss what it means to perfect the art of weaving. Pile one, your guides want you to realize that now is the time for you to start a different story, but the story doesn't have to start from the start. It can start from the middle. You can begin from the end and work your way back. You can write the ending and then begin at the beginning so that you know where you're heading. The story is yours to create. It's yours to imagine. It's yours to bring into life. It's yours to breathe into life. Everything is meant for you there. But what's been obscuring your vision is the fact that you're putting things in an orderly fashion when this world is not orderly or fashionable. It's chaos. There's a TikToker out there who does these videos about all the different like crazy things that you can find in Australia, you know, spiders raining from the sky, literally R-A-I-N-I-N-G, raining from the sky. Uh, There are reasons why I don't want to go to Australia. Not that I don't want to, it's just spider rain and I don't mix because arachnophobia is something that I genuinely deal with. Now, that being said, my point here is It's this satirical energy or or video TikToker. They do this thing where they pretend to be God and they pretend to be God's like secretary and comes in and is like, what do you want to create today? And he starts talking about one of the like really insane animals that Australia has. If you guys are from Australia, drop it down in the box, some of the crazy animals. I'd love to know. But then the secretary goes, well, why would we do this? Why would we create this? And he goes, because chaos reigns. And that's the thing. When chaos reigns, we're weaving anything and everything we desire into existence. Not everyone is going to understand that. Not everyone is going to understand that we incarnate and reincarnate and reincarnate multiple times in a single lifetime. Not everyone is going to understand that when we feel like there is something missing, it's for us to create whatever we feel is missing so that we can identify that which we feel is missing as being that which we are creating. And not everyone is going to even understand that. Why? Because it's a chaos notion. We think about spiders and we think about their webs and we think about how meticulous, how perfectly placed all of the strands, all of the silk strands are within that web. But we don't ever think about that moment that somebody walks through a corner of it or a stick falls and knocks down a corner of it. Now the web gets all skewed. But as the weaver continues to repair that section of the web, it's engaging in chaos. It's engaging in something that doesn't make sense because it's not part of the whole. It's a piece that is added to the puzzle. A piece added to the puzzle. This is for you to understand that not everybody is going to understand. (laughs) That's what you've been missing. That's what's been just, just on the edge just barely out of your reach, out of your sight, is the fact that nothing makes sense and everything makes sense simultaneously. It is the sage way, the middle way, the the gray path, the in-between, the liminal space. It's knowing that nothing matters as 
at the same time as everything all the time matters. So let's see the wisdom in the tarot cards. It, this is just the wisdom from beyond. We have the two of candles and the world. The four of candles with a ten of bones. Wow. Okay. When we decide to walk a new path, when we decide that what is closing is actually opening for joy, for happiness, we actually walk into our abundance. We walk into our happily ever after. The wisdom from the beyond is letting you know that if you continue looking to the past, you're never going to see the present. But there is a reflectionary point in this rebirth process, in this recreation process, in which duplication of what was is creating what will be, and what will be is abundance. It is the closing and the opening simultaneously. It is all and none, some in the middle. And if this doesn't make sense, sit with it. Ask your guides to make a little bit more sense with it. I honestly, guys, I'm just channeling the energy and I get like a really strong Dr. Seuss energy here. And so I kind of want to talk about fox and socks throwing rocks at the blocks, you know, like I just I get this really strong sense that I should try and rhyme everything that I say. And I would rather not do that because once you get into that mode, it's really hard to switch off. If you hadn't noticed, if you ever <laughs> try that, try it for a bit. That actually might be a message. Like when you start getting into a certain way of being, when you st when you are stuck in this energy, in this operational, you know, mode or this operational system in which all you do is you think about, well, this one time when I was a child, all I could do was look to my past. I always looked at this. I always faced this way, but now I'm being called to switch my directions. But as I'm switching my directions, look, it went from the little girl who tra traverses through here to, it's like Hamlet holding the skull, but Hamlet has already decomposed, except it's realizing that in true connections, we go down to the bare bones of who we are. We go down to the, the absolute essence, the most nourishing part of ourselves, the marrow the part that makes up the strength that we contain within ourselves. That's what we're meant to share. That's what we're meant to be. That's who we're meant to be. That's who you're meant to be. It's time to allow yourself to rise back up into this energy. Don't be dismayed if this does not make sense. It doesn't mean it's not your message. It simply means that it might not be the time for you. So let's take a look. This is just additional insight. So we're just going to get some additional messages from your guides. And then I'm going to leave this reading as it is. This has been one of the most unusual off the wall, all over the place readings I've ever done in my entire life. And I have the feeling that this is going to resonate for a very specific audience. And that's okay with me. At the same time, most of the time when I say that, this ends up making perfect sense to somebody because to me, this energy just feels like it's all over the place and this message feels like it's all over the place and I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I do feel it very strongly. All right, let's look. We've got altar, the card number two, a sacred devotion, worship skin deep, rising from the ash, the waters you keep. We've got four candles on here as well. Um, what I was going to say before that seemed to have gotten lost and then came back is the fact that whenever I feel this way about things, about readings, they always end up coming back. Like they, they end up resonating a lot with a lot more people than I think they are. I can't really, I can't really, um, I can't seem to make sense of the energy enough to bring through a cohesive thought. That's very interesting. I did want to point out, we've got the two of candles, which is the two, the world, which is 21, reduces to a three. So we have two, three, the four, and then 10, which reduces to a one. So we have two, three, four, one. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but we're at two already. 
So, and again, we have a two here. So we're literally, this energy here is saying that there is this shift, this change, this rebirth energy happening. Okay, let's see this final additional insight. And then I'm going to leave this reading for you guys. Um, let me know in the comment section below how this resonated. I'm really curious about it. So we have the coming of winter and we have 11. We don't reduce 11, but if we were, it would be two. So we have two, 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 one, 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 um, you know, repeating numbers, angel numbers. Those are significant. It says it comes in lullabies deep within your mirrored flesh. Alas, it is time to lay your quivering chest upon the winter's coming. Um, you know how in, in Game of Thrones, you kept hearing winter is coming, winter is coming. This is because during Game of Thrones, the summer and the winter tend to last years. The, it doesn't just last a couple of months or anything like that. They last years of time. So they had a long summer. They have several years of summer and they could say, they could feel winter was coming. So they would say winter is coming. And that means that they have to realize that they have to store enough for what they need. They have to have enough to keep themselves warm and to do this and to do that. This is about you preparing yourself for a different energy, a different season, a different you. And we can talk about that all we want, but this is about how you want to prepare. What I'm seeing here is it's about facing a different direction, facing your true north, facing your true abundance, facing your true pro prosperity, your true blessings. I'll Wow, I just wanted to say coming, like going through a rebirth, but I just heard the word alivening and I don't even think that's a word, but I just heard that. It's like coming back to life, but illuminating and rejuvenating everything within that so that everything has a new life. Not just you, but everything in your life has a new life. And that's what has been trying to reach you from beyond the veil. While we're in the midst of chaos, we don't always understand how to bring back order, how to bring back peace, how to come back to life. But as we begin to weave our story and come back to ourselves and then return to center and see that what we have created may look similar, but it is not the same for we are no longer the same. Now we have a brand new life, a brand new story, a brand new web. And it's time for us to honor this, to celebrate this and to hunker down and prepare ourselves for what is to come with this new beginning. So pile one, this has been your wisdom from beyond the veil. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides, my guides, the great spirit, for facilitating the connection between our energies and allowing these messages to flow through so beautifully, so strongly, and with such assurance. It is truly an honor and a blessing to bring these messages forth. Thank you so much. Pile one, if this resonated and you would like to support my channel, I would truly appreciate that. Some of the ways you can do that are by liking this video, commenting in the comment section below. You can subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. Um, you can also share this video on social media, or you can check out and or you can check out my description box. In the description box, there are links to donate to my channel, as well as a link to my Amazon author page where you can find all nine of my books. They are available on hardcover, paperback, Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. So go check those out, guys. I truly, truly appreciate everybody who purchases and, you know, checks out or lends the books and whatnot. So thank you guys so much. All right, pile one. I'm going to leave this here because I really want to get out of this energy. No offense. Um, I believe in you guys. I am really, truly honored. I love you all and I will see you at my next reading. Bye. Hello, pile two. If you chose the second pile, the reflection card, this is your message about wisdom from beyond the veil. Okay, so pile two, I have a channeled message for you guys. And I do want to say I'm sorry. I am in the middle of an ehlers Danlos flare. Um, and when that happens, I get very mono-like symptoms. 
So it's very much like mononucleosis. So I'm really tired and kind of spacey and having a hard time grounding myself. I'm doing my best, but I wanted to make sure that I got this reading out for you guys as well. Um, so if I seem kind of off kilter, I just want you guys to know like I am moving through just an e EDS flare. So with the reflection, the first message I got is all the world is a stage and then the roles we play and the play which rolls the ball, which was very strange. And then this is the, the channeled message that I got for you. We put on clothes, costumes, personas, change ourselves so the world reflects to us our beauty. But beauty is deeper than the surface. Who sees the true you and their eyes light up? Their smile widens and they tell you all the things you long to hear, yet still don't believe. Do you see the truest you in the mirror? And then I started hearing um, the song Rain by Sleep Token and the lyrics, For so long I have waited, so long that I almost became just a stoic statue fit for nobody. And I don't want to get in your way. But I finally think I can say that the vicious cycle was over the moment you smiled at me. Look, and then I got another message and it was look in the mirror and witness your own transformation from hardened stone to glowing angel as you smile from the heart. Can you now see what we in spirit see? Your light, your love, your authenticity is seen. Just as genuine love shows you your heart, those in inner turmoil reflect upon you their wounds. It is for you to rise up into your power of discernment to witness which, which is which. Remember, authentic love is honest without harmful intentions, and conditional love is poison coated with honey. Sweetness is not always better than the bite of truth. Okay, so before we get into that, I do want to tell you the intention for each of these cards. So with this card here, this is about what what it is that is creating this sense of you not being able to see into it. Like this, this is the card that represents whatever is obscuring you or making or creating the feeling that you can't see something or that something is missing. <laughs> Excuse me. The two tarot cards on either side represent the wisdom being brought to you from beyond the veil. And then these are just additional insight. So, all right. So with rain, and I do hear it singing in my head again, this is about the reflection. And you have the card, the reflection. When we look in the mirror, have you ever thought about the fact that if you, um, okay, <laughs> Spirit, help me explain this. When you, when you were a kid, did you ever play with Silly Putty? The reason why I ask is because with Silly Putty, if you put Silly Putty out on a piece of newspaper and you push down, it'll take an imprint of the words. Willow, come here. Come here, baby. Sorry, guys. Willow is whining. Say hi, Pile Two. Say hi, Pile Two. All right, go get her. Go get her. Go get this one. Go get her. All right. So, with Silly Putty, if you press down on a piece of newspaper and you pull it up, it will have an imprint of what's typed or printed on the newspaper. But what comes off, it will be backwards. So you must stand in front of a mirror and hold the silly putty up to the mirror. And it will reverse what is on the silly putty so that you can actually read what is written. You see, the mirror, when we look into the mirror, it shows us the reverse. It shows us the opposite. But we don't always realize that because we get so accustomed to looking in the mirror. So if you look in the mirror and you say horrible things to yourself, you look in the mirror and you think, well, I will never be this or that. The truth is, is that you already are those things. 
the truth is, is that you are meant to love yourself and you're seeing the reverse. You're seeing the part of you that is backwards. It is reversed. That is what the nature of the reflection is. Now, I will be right back. I'm going to let Willow out before we continue. All right. Thank you guys so much for your patience. I'm sorry about her. Um, she really does run my life, just completely runs it. With the reflection, we don't always realize that what we're being asked to see is something that is in the reverse. So if we're looking at an image and we don't realize that we're being asked to reverse the image, we're not fully seeing the story. So I want to see what it is that's obscuring you first. Seduction. Okay. What's sub Wow. What is obscuring your vision right now is this sense that maybe I am being lured. Maybe I am being seduced. Maybe somebody is telling me something because it's what I want to hear. But what if what you want to hear is what you are hearing because you are worthy of hearing it because it is the truth. We think about seduction in the ways of this person is trying to lure me into this sense of safety, this false sense of safety or this belief system or this or that. And we feel like we're being pulled into something that isn't necessarily ours. But what is that seduction pulling you to? So you think that the world is you know, it's like somebody in the world is pulling the blinds down because they want the room to be dark, but you feel like within the darkness, you're not able to see the truth. You're not able to hear the truth. You're not able to understand the truth, but you have a level of discernment that is unparalleled in this world and you don't trust it nearly enough, pile two. And I don't say this to call you out, though possibly your guides are. I say this because you need, you need to see it within yourself. I don't like usually using definitive statements, but you do. You need to see that within yourself. You have a level of discernment that is unparalleled, unmatched in this world, which means you already know everything that I'm saying to you. What it is that you're missing is the fact that what you're looking for is coming at you in the opposite. It's coming at you reversed. It's coming at you as the reflection. And the reflection, when we look in the mirror, is the reversal of what we're seeing. That's why if you take a selfie using your front camera versus using the camera on the back of the phone, the image looks significantly different because you're used to an image of your face being reversed. So the face that you see in the mirror is significantly different than the face that everybody else sees because they see you in the way that you are naturally. And when you look in the mirror, you see the opposite. You see the reverse. You see the reflection. This principle applies literally everywhere in your life. Right now, everything seems reversed. So where you see lack, what you believe you are lacking because that's what you are seeing, it's a reversal. They, the universe wants you to realize that in the areas that you're looking and you're perceiving lack, what is truly existent within that area is abundance. And if you are able to recognize that you're seeing a mirror, a mirror reflection in that area, then you can recognize that it is not that way. So let's see which way it is. Let's see the wisdom. Okay. We have death and the nine of goblets or the nine of cups. The way that this really is, is it is, <laughs> it's, being reborn into your dreams come true. So what you don't see is that by letting this way of seeing the world become its natural reversal state, you're going to be able to recognize the truth of your dreams come true. Wow, pile two. This is so straightforward. This is so to the point. I'm out. 
I'm, I'm just like, I wanted to say outraged for some reason, but I'm not outraged. I'm in awe. Reversal. I wanted to say I am outraged. When in reality, I am, I find it outstanding. I find it incredible. This message is so exacting. Yet when we look at the reflection, it's so oppositional. Wow. There, there's so many levels and layers to this message. This is something that I feel like should be sat with for a while. So let's get some additional insight here. We have protection, card number 29. This is my house, stained by the very blood flowing through its walls, covered in a veil of delicious prayers, yet deadly to those who dare lift its hidden. Oh my gosh, okay. And grief, the card number 20. It is but a mere glimpse of nothingness, hidden away deep within the chambers of your mourning. In the red clovers, birthing lost illusion, those who dare lift the veil shall discover the truth from the illusion of grief and grief's illusion. Grief builds and creates an illusion, an illusion that in death our dreams fall away, but the truth is through death our dreams are made true. But when we are seduced by the nature of our emotions, when we are seduced by the fears that we contain, the fears that build the grief, that build the illusions, that create a reflectionary energy within our lives. So everything is reversed from the actuality of what is going on. So when we are in a state of grief, when we are in a state of fear, we fear that we are not protected. We fear that we must take extra precautions, extra steps. Why? Because we fear the death of what we already have been promised. When we fear the death, the loss, the ending of something that has been promised, we are not able to see that a promise is never broken by the universe. The universe does not seek to seduce you. The universe, the universe has been seduced by you. The universe loves you. Sometimes seduction is love. Sometimes we don't realize seduc subdu oh. seduction is love. Sometimes we feel as though it is a subduction or um, a subtraction. We feel as though it is a loss, something that is removed. We feel as though there is no love. But the truth is, is protection exists. Love exists. Our grief and our fears weave the illusions of the opposite that we are lacking. Pile two, you are anything but lacking. You are abundant. You are a dream come true and your dreams are coming true. And the universe has been seeking to help you understand that so that the lies and the illusions stop seducing you into a false belief system and so that you are able to recognize the love, break the cycle, and start anew. Wow, okay. Pile two, this is the message I have for you. Like I said, this is quite clear and straightforward, but your guides really wanted this to just be there for you to realize. This is all I have for you. I want to take this time to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides, to my guides, to the great spirit for facilitating the connection between our energy energies and allowing these messages to flow through. <sighs> Excuse me, guys. All right. Thank you so much for the energy for pile two, for the awareness, for the messages, for the images. Thank you so much for the energy to continue to bring forth these messages. And thank you for bringing pile two's collective to this channel. Every single one of them are such a blessing in my life. And I thank you so much, Spirit. All right, pile two, if this resonated and you would like to support my channel, I would truly appreciate that. Some of the ways you can do that are by liking this video, commenting in the comment section below. You can share this video on social media or with your friends and family. Subscribing to my channel is another way. And a couple more other ways are in the description box. If you go to the description box, there are links to donate to my channel, link 
as well as a link to my Amazon author page where you can find all nine of my books. They are available, some of them in hardcover, paperback, um, Kindle, and Kindle Unlimited. So definitely go check those out and let me know what you guys think about the books. I would love some feedback. I would love to know if they have helped, if they have reached you, you know, the whole nine. So now I'm going to let you go. Pile two, I'm sending you a huge hug. I love you all. Thank you again for being here. I hope you have a beautiful Samhain and that the coming of the energy of the moon, the power and the leadership of the moon's energy in the world brings to you the awareness and the clarity that you need. Thank you again so much. I love you all. I will see you at my next reading. Bye. Hello, Pile 3. If you chose the card, The Illusionist, this is your message from beyond the veil. Now, I do want to mention, if you guys can hear some background noise, I do have the heater going in my office. It's pretty chilly this week. We have what's called a clipper coming through our area, so it's going to be windy and cold for the next few days. Um, <laughs> that means we're, my kids are spending Samhain or spending Halloween in snow gear. But that's okay. Now, we are getting messages from beyond the veil. This is the theme of it, the illusionist. This card right here represents the reason or, yeah, the reason or what has been obscured from you based off of this illusionist energy. The tarot cards on either side represent the wisdom being brought forth, and then these are just additional insights. So I did channel a message for you guys, um, and it just really dove right in right away. And it says, do you speak of belief or do you embody it? Do you recognize illusions or have you be become blinded by glitter? The energy here is what I would call tough love. It's mixed with existentiality and philosophical challenge. So like a lot of existential philosophical energy is here and it's really pushing at the boundaries of perception and especially self-perception. And then I got the matrix. Do you know the matrix? Have you broken out of it? Are you just in another simulation of what these kid, the kids these days would call wokeness? There was a really strong grandfather energy that came through with that. I don't know if some of you have lost your grandfather um, or it could be your great grandfather, but it was just a very strong grandfather energy. It says, who has the power and authority to determine what to determine what is truth versus illusion? What is the easier truth to believe? Who has sovereignty? Do you, do you, can you see? Do you know? Have you felt the feathery lightness upon your skin and neck as the spirit connects with you? Are your eyes seeing the truth? Are you openly viewing with all three of them? And then I heard a banging on a steel door and someone yelling, open up. The truth knocks. It waits. It always waits. It is patient. Lies are fleeting, flaky, and they flee the moment truth comes in. Will you open the door within to the truth you have hidden from yourself? Has the game of hide and seek you created finally reached its close? Conclusion. Then I got a clue for you. When truth is found, fear is gone. If illusions exist, fear is not yet done. I'm hearing this is your own game. You have the cheat codes. You have the key. Now, guys, I've been watching the Insidious series. And then before I came here, I was really exhausted. I was really tired. I was laying down in bed. I've been having a really rough day today um, with filming, just kind of with trying to function um, with the weather changes in my area. My Ehler Danlos really flares up pretty hard and I struggle a lot. And I can build these illusions like, oh, I can just push through it. I can just keep going. But the reality is, is that my truth is different. I can't just push through certain things. Sometimes 
I am my own worst enemy. Sometimes I tell myself things that I know are absolutely inaccurate because I don't want to admit to the things that are true because they make me feel weak. But the truest strength we contain within ourselves are saying, this is not right for me. This I cannot do. This is my limitation. This is my boundary. And I refuse to push myself beyond it. I refuse to push myself past it. I refuse to cross this line. And when I talk about these things, limitations, we don't, we don't always understand the nature of that. Why? Because this world is built upon possibility and impossibility, illusion and delusion. This world is built upon this is what you can do and this is what you can't do. And it depends on the person who is in power and speaking to say what you can and cannot do. This world is built upon illusions. It is fabricated in that. I just heard fabricated in disbelief. I think that's a punk rock song. I can't remember. For some reason, I'm getting a lot of fallout boy energy here too. So the reason why this energy is here is because it's time to ask yourself what the truth is. For me, the truth is that I am undeniably physically and emotionally and mentally exhausted right now. I am undeniably not feeling well. I am undeniably right on the cusp of having multiple infections and landing myself in bed for a week or two on end. That is my undeniable truth. The limitation that I have is whether or not I can continue moving forward without it causing detrimental harm. And people don't like to see those things. They don't like to admit it. So they weave these illusions of, I can supersede this. I can transcend this. I can move beyond that. And then we abhor or we detest or we simply sit and speak out against Saturn. Saturn and the limitations. Saturn and the lessons. And in reality, Saturn is going, no, I'm teaching you what you need to know about yourself. I'm teaching you to recognize when there is an illusion being woven, when there is something that we are refusing to see because we are stubborn AF. Humanity as a whole is stubborn AF. And Empire 3, I myself am stubborn. So you're right there with me if you resonate with this. So let's see why this has been obscured. We have vigilance. When we are in a state of hypervigilance, like how similar the coloring of these cards are. When we are in a state of hypervigilance, we're in that state because we don't know reality. There are times in our lives, and I have to speak based off of my own personal experience, there are times in life where we question reality so hard, we question the truth, we question our own actions when we know that we didn't take a certain action. Because someone else in our life feels as though they have more of a say over what reality is for you. So I'm going to give you guys an example of what your guides want you to be aware of. What you're missing is the truth. What you're missing is that there's been a deception moved against you. I had a memory come up the other day. I haven't even talked to my husband about it yet. I had a memory come up. And it was from my first marriage. And guys, this might be TMI, but um, girls who use tampons, you will understand this. I was taught to flush my tampons. It just was what I was taught as a kid. And this is before it became like a negative thing or whatever. Now, when I was in my first marriage, I went into my bathroom and there was a used tampon in the bathroom garbage. And so I asked my my first husband about it and he told me it had to be mine. Of course it was mine. No. Genuinely, guys, like, no, of course it was not mine. That was not It wasn't the brand, it wasn't the style, and it wasn't how I discarded of my tampons. 
But, but he was so adamant and so convincing and his anger and his rage and his violence were so overwhelming when I challenged him that I genuinely began questioning my own reality. I genuinely began wondering when it was that I utilized this, when it was that I did this, why I did it this way, why did I do it this way outside of the bounds of how I normally operated? Why why had I changed that? When did this happen? And I kept racking my brain trying to find a memory that did not exist for it was not an action that I took because he was having an affair. And that was a moment in which I should have been able to say, I caught you red-handed. This is undeniably this way, but I loved him enough to make it toxic. I was codependent and fearful about not being lovable enough to let him dictate an illusion. And when we live in that state and then we come out of it, we have this hypervigilance about what is true and what is false. And when someone lies to us and we believe that and then the lie comes to be known, now we're wondering what is true and what is false. That is the nature of the illusionist weaving through our existence realities that don't exist. And I'm not one to talk about that, but this is more about the mental realm. Your guides want to talk to you about how your hypervigilance is actually having you become the bully for yourself, where you're creating illusions. For some of you, this is about you owning what you know is true. Don't let another person's lies and fabrications and fear over getting caught in doing something that they know is not right in a situation to hurt you. Hold on to your strength. Hold on to your truth. So let's see the wisdom of this. We have the Ten of Candles or the Ten of Wands and the Knight of Bones or the Knight of Pentacles. The wisdom here is about the burdens that we carry and how that makes us move slower. It makes us move with more trepidation. We've carried such heavy burdens through life. And Pile 3, you have carried a heavy burden, a burden of fantasy rather than a reality. And it's not always of your making. And sometimes it is completely your fabrication. And so that line between you and the people who have gifted you or rather, okay, please don't shoot the messenger here. The people who have gifted you the ability to weave illusions into the world are people who have harmed you, likely. Why do I phrase it as a gift? I phrase it as a gift because the ability to weave an illusion into the world means that you have the ability to create worlds. You have the ability to create stories. You have the ability to make art, to bring art into this world, but into existence. People who gift us the ability to weave illusions are like J.K. Rowling's first husband. (laughs) She was able to create other worlds, an entire other world. Look at Look at Harry Potter. She created that entire world. The intricacies of that book, of the interwoven nature of that entire storyline, that began, that creation is because she needed a place to be in the midst of something toxic, something traumatic, something abusive. We need those places. For me, I escaped into books. That heavy burden that you bear of Well, I keep creating these false realities for myself, create those false realities for other people, but not in the ways that they were created for you. How would your greatest healing journey go? If you had whatever superpower at your hands, how would it go? I got brought into Natalie Jane's Intrusive Thoughts, the song Intrusive Thoughts with you guys. 
And it's about believing that you're never going to be loved and believing that if you just keep hurting others, then you won't get hurt. And it all comes down to some base reality that you're not lovable. So you're hypervigilant and you cut people off at the, at the first sign of too much burden. But breaking ourselves free of these illusions, it's a slow, it's a slow burn process. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh because I know how heavy it is, guys. I know. I know the weight upon the shoulders. I know the weight upon the heart. I know. I know how hard it is because I live this life. But I go to therapy every week and I journal almost daily and I navigate through a life in which I realize that the illusions that I'm weaving for myself do nothing more or less than harm me physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So I recognize that and I let myself get lost in other worlds to help ease the pain within my physical body from me pushing myself too hard. And I know that might not make sense, but if you deal with chronic illness and deal with chronic pain, then you know sometimes the best pain medicine you can ever take is slipping into a good book. And it is not escapism. It's healing. It's coping because you realize your life is still there, but you're feeding your brain dopamine and serotonin and endorphins by just sitting and reading a book. And sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes that is exactly what you need. So let's get this additional insight. We have ancestors. Number three, they hiss a quivering so deep only roots of your soil can lift the nakedness hidden within the vows made in silence. An ancient chill walking upon the spine. And then we have rebirth, 31. There is death in all that awakens, for it isn't blissful nor painless. It's a mighty rising, O flame resurrected. This is about your ancestors coming forth and saying, we're going to give you this opportunity to be reborn into a new way of being, a new life. It's going to feel like an illusion, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case. You're the one that determines what your reality is and do you want to continue carrying the burdens and carrying the baggage and carrying the heaviness and carrying the load of everything that came before Are you ready to let it go? And yeah, that's scary and it's hard and it's a challenge. And yes, we've been through the mill. Yes, you have been through the mill. Yes, you have been through every hard thing imaginable. But now we're giving you an opportunity to reinvent yourself, to recreate your world, to create new worlds to learn a new way of healing and a new way of operating and a new way of perceiving yourself and the world and your ancestors and where you came from and how you got to where you are by seeing that the vigilance that you had in recognizing the illusions in recognizing the ways that you trick yourself or others trick you, your diligence and vigilance in that process, in that healing has been what was needed. And now is the time where a steady pace forward is your best shot because that steady pace is going to bring you through the fires and flames of rebirth into something new and blessings of your ancestry will abound in your life moving forward. Pile three, this is the message from beyond the veil the wisdom for you in this moment. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides, my guides, the great spirit for facilitating the connection between our energies and helping these messages to flow through. Thank you for the boost of energy and creativity to sit here and bring these messages forth for pile three. And thank you for allowing this energy to reach all those within the collective who will resonate with pile three so that they may gain this wisdom, shift their perspective, and create amazing worlds for those themselves and perhaps for others. Thank you so much. Pile 3, if this resonated and you would like to support my channel, I would truly appreciate that. 
Some of the ways you can do that are by liking this video, commenting in the comment section below. You can sub subscribe to my channel. You can also share this video out on social media with your friends and family. And in the description box, there are links to donate to my channel. There's also a link to my Amazon author page where you can find all nine of my books. They are available in a variety of different formats, including hardcover, paperback, uh, Kindle, and Kindle Unlimited. So please go and check that link out for sure. And let me know if you guys purchase one of my books. I would love to hear your feedback. With all that being said, I am going to leave you here. Thank you again, Pile 3. You guys are incredible. And it is, as always, a true blessing and honor to read for you. I will see you at my next reading. I love you all. Bye. Hello, Pile 4. If you chose the prisoner card, this is your message from beyond. So before we get going, I'm going to tell you guys the intention for the cards. These cards represent um, the reason why things have been kind of just beyond reach for you. And it more represents the energy of what it is that's obscuring that information. These three cards here are Wisdom from Beyond the Veil and the two outside oracle cards are just um, additional insight. So you guys chose the prisoner card. And this is the channeled message that I wrote down for you guys. So pile four, this message is coming through in an unusual way. So by unusual, usually when I sit down to direct channel in writing, it comes in very esoteric, very higher level of awareness because I really work hard at draining myself and just letting spirit flow through me. But you guys know, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that when I sit down to channel, a lot of the times the messages come through in my own frame of reference. That's the nature of channeling. We are the filters. So sometimes spirit will filter through our own experiences. In this case, as I was sitting down to write, the first message came through that level of filter, which it normally doesn't when I am writing. But this is what I got. For many months, I have been trapped, strapped to a cross of my own making and doing. This summer, I stood in front of the mirror in my bathroom looked myself in the eyes and spoke poisonous, hateful words at myself. I was in immense emotional pain, and rather than spread the hurt outside myself, I spit curses upon myself. Afterwards, I was so deeply shamed, I lost the spark of life within me, and I froze. All of me was icy cold. My shadows became a tangible ghost clinging to me, freezing me from feeling, connecting, and living my life. I knew I needed help, but the ice encasing me was so thick I didn't know what help I needed or who to turn to nor how to ask. It took all my willpower this summer to ask my doctor for a recommendation for a therapist. Shame and guilt rob us of life. They eke away our life force until all we are is existence. They keep us prisoners of our wounds. And then I heard, help is on the way. And yes, I definitely heard it in the voice of Mrs. Doubtfire. It is waiting for you to summon the willpower to thaw yourself. The key is in asking for help. The second key is in trusting the help offered. The third key is in receiving the help and guidance. And you are the final key. You have all you need and you have warmth all around. And then I heard your guide say, thaw, please. All right, so when I got up to come and channel this, it was literally 1234, 1234, and I forgot about how that message came through until I literally just sat down to read it to you guys. So this is about each individual key. Knowing that we need help, but not knowing how to ask, sometimes it's literally we have to verbalize it that exact way. I need help, but I don't know what I need help with. I need help, but I don't know who to ask. How can I ask for help if I don't know what help I need? 
How you can do that is simply by saying, I don't know what I need, but I know I need someone to help me because I don't know how to feel alive. I don't know what this life means anymore. And it's okay to feel those things. It's okay to get to that point pile for When you are working with the energy of the prisoner, whether it's by your own doer, doing or by the doing of somebody else or some event in life that has suddenly trapped you in this state where you don't know where to go and you feel chained and locked down and the heaviness and the pains and the burdens are just so hard where you're trying to find your path, you're trying to find your direction and it seems like all around you are whisperings, go this direction, go that direction and you feel so confused that the best thing that you can do is sit down. It's like in, I'm seeing the scene in Alice in Wonderland, the original, the cartoon from the Disney channel where she's walking the path. And then all of a sudden the dog who is a brush comes and starts walking around her and the dog is clearing the path, like cleaning it up. And eventually, eventually she finds herself on a singular square. There's no way forward and no way back and no direction and no idea and everything is dark and she just sits down and she cries because she's lost and she's alone and she doesn't know what to do and we can get stuck in that state. We can get stuck and trapped. So let's take a look at why because I feel like the why is the most important thing here. We have meditation and the fall. We're getting trapped. Pile four, I resonate so deeply with this. When we think about meditation, we think about stilling the mind, stilling the senses. But when we fall off the path, when we feel like we are on the wheel and the wheel is stuck and we can't go anywhere, that life has just fallen down to pieces. It's like this card makes me think of the Necropolis card, which is all about death. This is about realizing that one particular structure of something, sometimes that needs to fall away. Sometimes it needs to be torn down. Alice believed that she was lost, that she couldn't find her way, that she couldn't get out of where she was, but she just had to realize that there is still help unseen. I want to say during that scene, the Cheshire cat shows back up. And the Cheshire cat is as all cats are, jerks. (laughs) But when I was a kid, the Cheshire cat was one of my favorites. The magic and the mystery and the smile and whatever. But always came through at the end. When we feel like no matter what we do, if we try and engage in regular meditation or our own unique meditation, that we're just falling further and further down into the abyss, down into the darkness. The path can't be found. We're literally adding more chains and more weight and more burden upon ourselves. This is about you realizing that sometimes we need to give ourselves more than a break in a in the form of meditation. Sometimes we need to walk away. Walk away from the seeking. Walk away from the inquiry. Walk away and allow yourself to come back to life. A lot of the time, I I have been beating myself up, not just for what I did this summer because I was in the wrong state of mind, but also walking away There are times where I will have to take two or three or four days to do a reading and other times where I can do two or three readings in a day. It really depends. But sometimes it's about walking away and allowing the energy to change within ourselves so that when we come back to it, we're coming back clear. Sometimes we need to give ourselves the opportunity to allow our minds to give us a solution for how we can fall. And by the fall, we can look at falling off of the cross that we have put ourselves on, falling away from this prisoner energy. So let's see the wisdom that wants to come through here. We have the three of candles or the three of wands, 
the lovers. And the two of candles or the two of wands. This is curious here. Three times two equals six. If you combine these two cards, a single person looking to the past and then another person projecting forward into the future, if you take a look at the past and the, and the future and then you bring them together, what do you find? You find yourself in the present moment. You find yourself coming together. Sometimes we need to walk a solo journey. Sometimes we need to start looking at what can we do to change this? What can we do to shift this? What decision can we make? The wisdom coming to you from beyond the veil is that sometimes a journey must be taken by someone other than you. Sometimes a journey has to be based off of a choice to come together and to merge together and to go through some random shift, whatever the shift may be. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to occur. But sometimes it's about us allowing ourselves to look at the fears that we hold within ourselves as a child. Why can't I ask for help? Because as a child, there was no one there to hear you when you said, I need help. Help me. And so now it's the time for you to realize that you need to give yourself time with your inner child nurturance, love, compassion, forgiveness, all of these things that we give to others so easily, it's time to give to yourself. But how do you give it to yourself if you can't allow yourself to see a better way forward? Sometimes we have to realize that the better way forward is in making the choice to let things fall away, let ways of being fall away, let interactions fall away, let certain things fall. Let the past fall so that the future can be reformed. And how the future is reformed is by changing the present moment right here and right now. And that can be hard. It can be really difficult. Um, There's a song coming through for you guys, and it is Jericho by Aniko. And in that song, they say, I'm the future past and present. I'm the fine line. You are the fine line, Pile 4. You are all of these things. So if you are the future, the past, and the present, that means that you exist in all times, in all places, in all spaces. That means that help that you can receive is literally limitless. It has multiple sources, and that means that you have multiple resources, That means that you get to make the decision to say, I have all of these things within myself. And so now I'm going to allow myself to fall off of this place that I have trapped myself in, this ice that I have encased myself in because it's time for me to live life. It's time for me to experience life. It's time for me to get back to life. And that can be really hard and scary, especially when you've gone through pains and anguishes It can be hard. I'm not proud of the story that Spirit asked me to share with you guys. I'm not proud of it. There are so many people out there who would shame me for what I did. Their shame that they would put upon my shoulders is nothing compared to that which I put upon my own. But I hit a point in which I realized I need help, but I don't know what I need help with. I need help, but I don't know how to ask. And so I just sat down and I said, this is what I need. I need a therapist. I need a therapist who can help me with X, Y, and Z. And then I listed a number of things going on within my psyche. I said, I need help. Do you have a suggestion? And then you know what, guys? She gave me a name and a phone number, but she didn't make me make that phone call. No, I chose to do that. And when we stand in that place where we say, okay, I'm choosing to make this phone call. I am choosing to engage in this action. I am choosing to ask for help. Even if I don't know what help I need, I am choosing to ask for help. When we make that choice, Slowly but surely, we are unlocking those chains because we're realizing that we have the power within us to free ourselves. 
And sometimes we just need an outside source to help us remember that. So pile four, the biggest thing that is coming through for you guys from beyond the veil is that you are your biggest resource, even if you don't give yourself the credit that the only person holding you against the wall and chaining you up is you. And I know that's hard to hear because we can see what everybody else did and what has occurred. But at the same time, we're the ones that have the power to change. We're the ones that have the power to adapt. We're the ones who have the power to heal. So let's get your additional insight. We have ritual, the card number 33. Can you feel them? Wild creatures linked by the very blood you will spill into your craft. A ritual of dedication to self and those whose gazes hold fire, but whose whispers carry you softly through the unknown. And then we have healer in the card 22. Literally, three, 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 two, two, two. Guys, this is crazy. Listen as the medicine bleeds through her teeth. A river of mercy blessed blessed by mother, seen only by those who hold her mirror. As you do this, you're going to develop new rituals, new steps, new ways of healing yourself. And as you do that, allow for this awareness to arise within you, that you have held this within you all along. You've been able to recognize this is being something that you're capable of doing. But sometimes when we are the healer, we forget that we're capable of healing ourselves. We just forget. And that's okay. There's no shame and no guilt meant to be held for that truth. Sometimes we forget. I've been there many times before. Pile four. I almost called you guys pile two for some reason, but pile four. More than anything, the wisdom from beyond the veil wants you to know that you have the ability to change everything. You have the strength and the keys within you. You have the ability to heal. And they will continue holding the flames, lighting the candles, Surrounding you with love and peace, protection and grace, so that you can own your own strength and your own power and learn how to heal in a new way. Pile four, this is what I have for you. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides, my guides, the great spirit for connecting our energies, helping these messages flow through for spreading it through the collective so that it can reach all those it's meant to for pile four. And thank you so much for them being in this life, for them continuing to move forward and for them hearing this and receiving this message. Thank you. Pile four, if this resonated and you would like to support my channel, I would truly appreciate that. Some of the ways you can do that are by liking this video, subscribing, Um, to my channel, commenting in the comment section below, sharing the video on social media or um, with your friends and family. And there are also links, if you go to my description box, to donate to my channel and a link to Amazon author page, my Amazon author page. Wow, my, my brain is just like shutting down. I am so tired, guys. Like I have a huge Ehler Danlos flyer, and I am super tired. And now that I'm not like in your channeled energy, um, I'm getting spacier. But on my Amazon author page, you will find links to all nine of my books. They are available in a variety of different formats from hardcover to paperback to Kindle, Kindle Unlimited. So please go and check those out. Any and all of these are really great ways of supporting me, supporting my channel, and helping these messages reach the collective. So without further ado, I'm going to leave you guys here. Pile four, I'm sending you guys the biggest hug, so much love, and a lot of healing energy. I love you all so much, and I will see you at my next reading. Bye.